It was meant to be a late summer night of adventure for five friends, united by their thirst for excitement and exploration. But what began as a carefree caving excursion in the early hours of August 18th, 2005, on Utah's Y Mountain, would end in unfathomable tragedy. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? We're back. Yes, everyone is here. A couple of podcasts that I've got going on right now. You guys know I have the snatched one, which is not the gay one. It's so. Uh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> well, it's not the gay one, apparently. <laughs> no, I don't know about it at all. Snatched. You snatched. All Alien right. encounters. Oh, okay. <sighs> you don't know about that one. Mm-mm. What's up, Shram, Martin, Desiree, Joanne? Good to have you guys. What's up, everyone? The regulars. I know we kind of talked about it the last time that I was here, but I like that everyone has their own unique emoji to say hello. I know it's awesome. So, Disaster thon. Yes. Yes. So that's the podcast cover. I, I got the ooh the taco cast down there is uh-huh. like blended in on the real one, but I have some great episodes. I got four episodes now. One of them is about alien sex, which is Mm -hmm, pretty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tantalizing. (laughs) Is that about probing? It 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 does involve some probing. We can talk about that today as a supplement, and we one supplementary episode about. I mean, you heard it. Mm -hmm. This guy in Brazil, he uh, had some sexual relations with an alien. Yep, interesting. He was adamant to point out that she looked better than the other aliens. That was very important that he said that. (laughs) <laughs> the hottest one. All right, there's my plug on that shit. All right. Any Fun. new members, Jen? Um, not since the last time that I was here, but that's okay. You can still join and you can still get your shout outs, everyone. Um we have two tiers. We have our Taco Supremo tier, and we also have our small taco tier. So join whichever one feels good to you, but please, please join and support us so we can keep doing this. But uh, today's surprise shot is for our good friend Lars in Germany. Hey, Lars! What's up, Lars? Guten Tagen, or Guten... Guten Tag? Uh, Guten Tag. Uh, either one of them. Guten Tagen, Guten Morgen. But I don't know how to say good afternoon, so it's just going to be a good day. So here's a surprise shot. Surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. I'm intrigued, worried. Don't be worried. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. I don't know if I want to take this. It's good. You'll oh like it. Oh, my God. You are such a puss it's when it green. comes to shots. All right. Cheers, Lars. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that was delicious. Yeah, it was good. That, what was that? It's a pistachio martini. <sighs> oh, that was delightful. Mm-hmm. That was very good. August 17th, 2005, five friends get together. Ariel Singer, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, J. John Blake Donner, Scott K. McDonald, and Joseph Ferguson. Five friends get together. They're sipping coffee at Ironic Ashes earlier that day. Jennifer Galbraith, 21, a student at Utah Valley State University. And keep in mind, these are all college age age kids. They're all friends here. She suggests to her friends that they take a little hike up the mountain. Now, they're go- they got to go at night because you're not supposed to go where they're going. In fact, where they're going to is... I mean, probably some of you guys have been here before. So if you know what this is, this is the Y Mountain. Has anyone ever been here? No. There's a big fucking Y in the mountain. Oh, I see. I have not been to Utah before. Me either. Mm. It's on my list because all states are on my list. But You would be a great Mormon wife, like one of four. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm not good Sister at sharing. wife, Jen. <laughs> I'm not good at sharing, so no. No, it's That's not, okay. John's not either. He would make a terrible sister wife. It's not like that, Jen. Cause he I, would, but he would be like a, a good Mormon husband, though. Yeah. Because I feel like no, it's different. No, I wouldn't be able to put up with y'all fucking all these women and periods bleeding all over the place. What the fuck? <laughs> Jennifer Galbraith, 21, she tells her friends, they're sipping coffee, listen, guys, 
I've done it before. And the rush you feel, or at least the rush I felt when I narrowly escaped death spelunking down this hole in the side of the mountain, it was, uh, it was orgasmic. It was sensational. I don't think that the words spelunking and orgasmic go together. <laughs> um, but I'm spelunking. Ew! <laughs> God. Is anybody still watching this? No, because they haven't commented <laughs> since Welcome Back, Jen. So they just say Welcome Back and then they They're leave. like, oh, okay, this, this this show's gone downhill. No, Shram says I love you. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Shram. That makes us feel better. <laughs> Desiree's here. Okay, thank you. We needed some re- re- reaffirmation Validation. that we should be here doing this. All right. Um, okay. Is it Splunk or is it Spelunk? I think it's spelunk because I just the way that you <laughs> spelunking. I don't like that word. It's like I think I would prefer Sup-lunk, the word spelunking. Spelunk. I think I prefer the word moist. I like the word moist is the accurate word to describe how cake should be. Correct. Yeah. Who but, is it that doesn't like the word panties? You? I don't like the word panties. I love that word. I don't mind that I word. Like that word. We always talk about this. I'm sorry. Undies. They're undies. Briefs. They're sitting there drinking coffee, guys. Oh my god. They're at like, like Central Park. Oof, you would not believe it. It's all right. A little disclaimer here. All right. I did go before and I did make it out of this cave, but I almost died. I almost, I I had to go to the hospital. I almost drowned. It's a water cave. Okay. So the cave is filled with water. And I'm going to show you the cave. So an in-ground pool? But you dive down in it, and there's an opening where you can kind of chill out of just a void. Jennifer says, I almost died in this cave. Literally, I got lost coming back, and you have to hold your breath because it's so narrow in there. Only four, probably, I think, less than 30 inches diameter, 20 inches diameter. You can't bring an oxygen tank. I'd put one leg in and be like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I think it'd get stuck in my thigh. It's the width of that that panel right there. Again. Um, Guys, like, I almost died. I almost ran out of oxygen. And when I came up, I saw the opening that I missed. I came up and (gasps) I sucked in air right before I passed out. And that water just gushed right in my lungs. And she was sent to the hospital for it. But holy shit, what a rush, right? So I say we do this. I say we go up there tonight. It's a short hike up this mountain. Tonight at 3 a.m. Sounds like a good time to go spelunking. At 3 a.m. we'll hike up there, just the five of us, and I'll show you guys. I know exactly where it's at. We go into the cave and come out the other side, and it'll be a memory you'll have forever. She said that the water, when she went that first time, was so cold that she had to be treated for hypothermic symptoms. Mm. And that when she resurfaced, she gasped in all this water into her lungs. The group sitting at the coffee shop drinking their, you know, their favorite coffee, they're like, oh, man, you know what? We should dub this before we go in there. Let's dub it right now and see if this name will catch on. Let's... Let's dub it the Cave of Death. Oh. So that's what it's known as now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a very appropriate name for this cave. Martin says, doesn't awesome. really sound like a good time to me. Yeah, I would be uh, in concurrence, yes. Yeah, yeah no shit. Nah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah, no shit. Mm-mm. Nope. Maybe if it wasn't water. <clears throat> I don't, After the Nutty Putty Cave, anything that involves a cave to me is like a... Yeah. Nope. Nope, absolutely not. Let me show you this cave right quick. This is the cave entrance. And I'm going to show you the real pictures of the cave entrance, right? Mm. But this is a dry cave. So the cave is actually hidden between a rock slit and... You wanted uh, my reaction to the word slit. I can tell. Slits and tits. (laughs) Slits and tits. You're like, she's going to (laughs) react. That's what what it's used making direct eye contact under this rock formation and past a bunch of bushes and trees <laughs> waiting it, for my, my reaction to the word bushes okay <laughs> it's funny because whenever he says something that he knows is or wants to get a reaction from he does this face 
I, you know what's funny is I do the same thing when I when I want to check his reaction for food if he likes the meal. <laughs> but he like it's uh, uh I want to know does like does he like what I made and he wants to know does she hate what I said? <laughs> Underneath this bush is a slit. <laughs> I think he had this in his notes. He probably planned this conversation out. I didn't. This is the exact description of it. It was a rock slit. That's what it's called. And then that got me thinking of slits and tits. And then it said bush. Dude, like all the pieces are there. I got to... <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> So this is a dry a this is a dry cave. It is known as a dry slit. It is known say, as that sounds like a problem. <laughs> this cave is not moist. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> do we have anywhere that pistachio stuff? I think that's what got us yes, here. Yes, we do. We have plenty. Like a little more. I should have brought out the glasses to just pour some. I know, delish. Now this cave, as you see, it goes in ninety feet. All right, but that's not the fun part because this is all dry, right? This is just a walk in the park. Let me show you the actual entrance of this cave. So here's the cave entrance right here. That's the exact cave entrance. And this is water. I mean, I dude, I would walk in here all day long, right? Uh, it doesn't look tall enough for me. But hold on a second. This isn't the part that makes it exciting. What's the part? Now, this is called Golem's Cave from that guy from... Um, one of those movies. Lord of the Rings. Gollum. Because in this cave, you hit a point. There's a ring that rules them all. And this little opening is where the fun begins. Okay, this is actually on the floor. So let me show you the let me show you a better diagram of this cave. That sounds like a tagline for a horror house. This is where the room where the fun begins. And then like you have these clowns that jump out with chainsaws and then you play that stupid whistle in the background. So you see the cave here. Once you get to a certain spot in this cave, you can go underwater about mm. 15 feet. Now it's completely filled up. It's a tunnel of water. It's a tunnel of water about 15 feet in length. And you have to Go holding your breath. You cannot bring an oxygen tank or anything in there because it's real thin. It's basically, and we're going to read a description. It's the size of like a, I saw somewhere like a cabinet door or a refrigerator door, like the width of a refrigerator. You think about your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all you're getting. That's the whole diameter of it. So, but then you, then you come up and there's this void of air. And about eight people can fit in it, and it's kind of fun, right? I mean, it's like exclusive. It's like a little nightclub, right? Not really, but you just go, and it's like, oh, we made it. Could you but, imagine with, like, you just have to swim through all that, and then there's, like, a bar and strobe lights and the music, and then you have to, like, you're like, I have to go out for a smoke, but you can't smoke in the cave, so you have to, like, get your <laughs> mask, and you have to, like, swim right back out, and then you have to smoke out there, you have to swim back through, and it's like, is this worth it? From cave enthusiast Israel Nendowser, the entrance features a small pool of water you must crawl through, and then a 90-foot passage which contains a fork. One way leads to a pool of water which is two feet in diameter. Two feet in diameter. That's tiny. That is two feet. You're, you got to swim through two feet. No, 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 no. If you, yeah, like. Literally, no, my body wouldn't fit through that. Correct. If you submerge yourself into the pool, there is an underwater passage about three to four feet high and 15 feet long that leads into another room about eight feet in diameter, which is where you emerge. All right. From a, uh, a John Jasper says the following. The reward was a little room where you could barely stand and get out of the water. Explains... Tim Pangos Grotto Chairman John Jasper, it just didn't seem worth the risk. Now, this cave wasn't even surveyed yet until after this disaster. But this is basically how you get into the hole. It's very tricky to get into this hole. As you see here, you have to shimmy your way. So you're up here on the top, the top left. Yeah. On this cave. Okay. And the hole is here. And then to the right, this way is the the air pocket where you can chill out the room, the, the room where you hang out at. Right. 
But to get there, you got to go in this way. You have to go in this way. That's what she said. So you have to kind of shimmy yourself down. And then when you're ready to dive, you kick your legs behind you. And then you dive as fast as you can, about 15 feet. Okay. You go about 15 feet. And you find yourself in the cave void. Why? Now, you can't turn around. You see, you can't. There's not enough room to turn around. Why is this fun? <laughs> I don't understand it. But who determines that this is fun? Like, who, right. who decides that they're just going to let him? Let me see what's in this cave. Oh, water. Let's see how long I can hold my breath. Oh, look, there's air. Hey, guys, there you could fit like seven more people in here let's go and we can all just it's standing room only yeah packed like sardines and this is a good time this is fun <laughs> i would much rather just sit on the couch and watch a movie literally and then pass out <laughs> with like 15 miserable. minutes till the end of it yeah i'd rather read about a bunch of people getting killed from it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, check this it out. This is not fun. For you me. can you can only swim one way, uh-uh. and it is pitch black dark. Oh yeah, what happens if you're swimming out and someone else is like, oh, let's check out this cave, and they're swimming in, and you can only fit like one person. Like, what's gonna happen if if they well, have a collision? You fucked. Th- well, that is a that is a very good point, Jen, and that is the reason one of the friends decided to stay out of the cave oh, while good. the other four went in. They're smart. Good they decision. must be a pretty well-educated human. One experienced diver said that he had previously went into this hidden cave. Now, this hidden cave isn't on any survey because they don't know about it yet. Survey no, because says? it's like nothing. So they do look through all these mountains, the geological survey people, mm-hmm. and when they find a cave, they usually block it. They put so, to, cement to make sure people don't do shit like this. Well, yeah. not not just that, but people you know could fall in. Right. Let me tell you because a, a lot of these holes are like in a lot of these slits are in the ground. Right. Do you remember when I first moved in here and then they had that hurricane and you guys stayed here because you're like it's just a hurricane and I was like no it's a hurricane and I went to Gatlinburg. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Tara and I went to Gatlinburg and then in Gatlinburg they have this cave exploration thing and it's a whole tourist thingy and this is one that is safe to go in because they host it's, tours oh, okay. but still like a human of my size right like i literally hit my head at least three times oh. like and that's just walking we didn't have to dive or like do anything and i'm like i will never go in a cave again no Why cave is safe go to go cave? in i think the only cave i've ever been in is in like gibraltar I near think spain that's it. yeah <laughs> and again like it was like a tour type yeah. thing and that was it. And that's that's it. That'll be it for me. One experienced diver said that he had previously went into this hidden cave. But on his return, he actually missed the exit. Let me show you this again, because this is really important. Oh, it's a fork. It's, an, it's, a, it's a Y, yes. So coming back, there's a rope. And if you hold on to the rope and use it, you should be all right. But you see how this guy kind of missed it altogether? Like, he's coming. You got to come back from the right here over yeah. on this side, right? Oh, so he went the wrong way. No, he didn't go the wrong way. Because if his body's this way, that means he's got to be coming back from the other way. So he actually swims back. And then misses the only exit because it's pitch black and you can't see shit. Okay, so the rope is there, so you grab up and pull up, but he did not. And then he and then he gets in this space where he is stuck and you can't turn around. You remember? So you hit this wall and you're just feeling stuff because it's pitch black. So to get out now, if you say, oh, shit, I think I missed the only exit, you have to push yourself back right. while you're in the water yeah. swimming. And you know how slow that is to push yourself back? Well, how far is it? What Jen see is like fucking six feet, eight feet. Look at it. You see it right there. But it's that's like- not that far. In the pitch black, you can't see what in you're the doing? Pitch, there's other things at play here, Jen. Number one. You don't have any oxygen. Okay, we've been watching this show called Blind Frog Ranch or whatever. Oh, that sounds... And is that like a sister of the Skinwalker Ranch? Indeed it, it is. In a cave... Also like, in Utah. Oh. In a cave such as this, as we'll talk about here in a second, this is the void. Yes. This has oxygen in it. Correct. You put six people in there... I don't there's see how six people can fit there. How, how quick does that oxygen settle and go oh, away? Oh, yeah. Quickly. <laughs> So there you are ha- no trees in there. Oh my god, that's dumb. 
<laughs> That's pretty dumb. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> no, so, me either. I just thought six people fitting in there. Oh, I, I mean, like, that's so a lot you, of people. You come back, you swim back, and you have to take this <gasps> big breath so you can hold your breath swimming, and plus all the adrenaline and whatnot. And when you <gasps> take that big breath, you're not getting the oxygen level you usually get. Right. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, shit. I didn't Why even think is this about fun that. for people? <laughs> this, is, this gets really bad. Here. Right. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> One experienced diver said that he went to the hidden cave and nearly mi- missed the only exit. He talks about when he has to push himself back, which takes another 30 seconds. And he's only got 60 seconds max oh, of oxygen. Yeah. I didn't think, I'm like, that shouldn't take too long, but like he can't put he's, his head above water. Okay. He's trying to paddle backwards because he can't turn around. He says when he came out of the hole, <gasps> he was nearly dead. And all that water <gasps> sucked right into his lungs because he actually took a breath while he was underwater because it was forced to. Right. And <gasps> right when he was coming up, by milliseconds, he survived and had to be hospitalized. <laughs> and that was one person. So imagine putting now four people in that cave. Jesus Christ. And he was experienced. These are 21-year-olds. Were they drinking beforehand? Because like, yeah, I drinking like- coffee. <laughs> well, I knew they were at the coffee place, but like, is that like... I'm just saying another factor that could have played into this is if they were like, let's just get drunk and go into this cave and do all this fun, cool stuff. And this doesn't sound like fun, cool stuff to me. Only the drinking part before going into the cave sounds like fun and cool stuff. So this is the entrance of the cave here. So you walk along this opening and then you see here, this is, you got to dive into this little... Oh my opening. God, absolutely not! <laughs> absolutely not! So if I'm you, no, going to just... you can't even like go into... You have to let like, go. If I'm going to no, describe I'm not that this flexible for somebody to look how small this hole uh-uh. is. Yeah. Uh, no. That's a no for me. Jesus. Absolutely. I mean, not. It's like after maybe this is just the time of year, but I am not feeling like this me could fit into that. No. No way. And it's not even a time of year thing for me. It's just like a never do. Like don't do that ever. <sighs> That room holds about six to eight people. There is a rope that runs the length of the underwater tunnel tied from... Who put the rope there? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's smart, but, like, who was... I mean, the cave has been... That? Apparently, the cave has been... Like, these these adrenaline junkies do this, and okay, since the 60s, like, they, they've somebody found this and put it there. Oh, yeah, but a rope is not naturally occurring, so someone had to have thought, <laughs> like, let's invite other people to do this. Correct. <laughs> There's a rope that runs the length of the underwater tunnel tied from one end to the other. And what happens when the rope breaks down? Tied from one end to the other that swimmers can hold on to to guide themselves through. The other fork is dry and about 200 feet in length. All right, so let's enter this cave. It's about 3 a.m. The friends that enter the cave is all of them except Joseph Ferguson, who said he would stay outside and watch so no one else would come in. I think he was just like, I ain't doing this shit. He's a smart man. <laughs> what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Good All call, right. Joseph. Now, he was in the cave. As, as you saw, the, the cave actually goes. You walk in this cave where you can actually stand up and walk in it. The dry cave. Right. And then that little hole, the water cave, is there. So he was actually waiting in there, waiting for them to resurface out of that tiny hole. And then he was going to help them up. All right, so it's about 3 a.m. in the morning at this point. I mean, that was smart of him, but also in 2005, like, what are you doing to bide your time while your friends are in a cave? You're just, like, sitting there. You don't have a smartphone. I know. I was going to say, this is before. This is, like, even right around the time that T9 is just, like, starting to get, like, you're not texting your friends. You might, you know, pull. T9? Yeah, the texting type. The auto text? Or you might have to, like. You know, this is the time Facebook that you call, just coming out. call Mr. Movie Phone and find out what's playing on the on the cinema. He just sat, or and you can call Miss Cleo. Looked at the stars and call Miss Cleo. Reefer. You could also do that. I will say that the Heidi. Hey Heidi, what's up? What's Heidi? up, Heidi? The four that are diving in the cave: Ariel, Jennifer, John Blake, and Scott. They were going to tug on the rope twice to let. Joseph know that they were there. Now, they're only 20 feet away at this point, but, and that did happen, so they all got there. Now, they weren't going to hang out. 
by any they, means. They weren't no. going to hang out. It's just, okay, we're all here. Let's go back. Because as as we said earlier, the oxygen is already pretty depleted. In so there. were they gonna like like one go into the cave, find the void, and then come back, and then the next one, or they were gonna go in to the cave, find the void, wait for the next person, go into the cave, find yeah, the void. So they're all gonna be in the cave void at the same time. They're all gonna be in the void at the same time. However, another thing is you have to wait at least thirty seconds for the first person to go and then the second person because you don't want to run into anyone. You know, it's, it's such a tight space. You got to give them, you got to give them some time to get to where they're going. Right. So they get to the cave void. They're all there and they had already mapped out who's going to go back first. And that would be Jennifer Galbraith. She was the first to exit the cave. All right. Well, she was the one who had been here before. Exactly. Ariel was next. She was second to exit. She followed, but only after waiting for about 30 to 60 seconds, which you'll see is a long time when you don't have much oxygen left in that void. Right. Also, keep in mind, just swimming and the adrenaline, they're using a lot of that oxygen just getting in there all at once. Mm. A lot of that oxygen is being depleted. Right, because how long are they all in there for? Jennifer exits first. She dives back under and she is going towards the entrance. Ariel was second to follow. She waited about 30 to 60 seconds to give time for Jennifer to get out safely. This is at this point you have Ariel. She starts to swim back after waiting about 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. However, she finds Jennifer unconscious Uh in the water by the hole, as you see there. Shit. Now, she's only got 60 seconds or so of oxygen. She's holding her breath. So imagine it is pitch black. You're the second to go. Jennifer's first. You wait 30 seconds. You can't see anything. You (gasps) take a big gasp. You go back in the water. You got to swim about 15 to 20 feet to get out. And then right when you see the light, there's a tiny bit of light coming in from the hole that you got to swim up. Mm-hmm. A tiny bit in this two foot diameter hole, you see a tiny bit of light. But then, because your eye catches that light first, mm-hmm. but then your eyesight kind of goes back level and you see your friend's body just floating unconscious in the water. Now, this presents a couple challenges here. Quite a few. Okay. Well, yeah. Like, what do you do? Do you save your friend? But they always tell you to put your no, oxygen no, no, no. mask on first before you put Jen, anyone Jen, else's it's, on. It's not about saving your friend. This passage can only fit one person at a time. Oh, no. There is now a blockage in the only exit. The oxygen is running out for the three people left in the cave. Oh, shit. They have to swim, but yet now there's a, a blockage, a, a blockage of a human body that you have to get out of the way in order to escape. <laughs> oh, no. So at, at this point, not only does she see her friend who's probably dead or unconscious, lungs full of water just floating there. It's not about should I save her? It's about I can't get by her. And I can't swim backwards. And the other person's about to swim in here, too, because he was only going to wait 30 seconds. And everyone knows the oxygen supply is they can't hardly breathe in there. So they're anxious to get out. Mm -hmm. And now there's a traffic jam underwater in a tunnel where you can't even turn around in. So now you're going to basically have a traffic jam of bodies with only 60 seconds max of holding your breath. That's what we're that's what we're dealing with here. It's not fun to me. She starts losing oxygen at this point. She is on the verge of death. She has got to find a way, and this sounds morbid and kind of fucked up, but it's true. She's got to find a way to push Jennifer's body out of the way so she can survive. If she can push this body out the way, and maybe she'll, you know, jump up and then tell Joseph, oh, you know, Jennifer's unconscious and they'll reach in and save her but now it's up to ariel can she push this unconscious body out of the way of her only exit without her drowning as well but we're gonna get to that in a little bit oh what a tease i do want to talk a little bit about some of the caves i've found this really cool thing one of the reasons it is a good idea to go into this cave and do this is because 
there is potential treasure there. We've been watching this show, which I think is really fabricated. It's called uh, Blind Frog Ranch. They're treasure hunters in Utah in the Uinta Basin, Basin right by Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. And I think it's fabricated a lot of it, the more I think about it. But that's kind of the reason I want to do the story. But they're looking for treasure. And in this part of Utah, supposedly, there are there's a, a horde of Navajo treasure. Unfound Navajo treasure. And I found this one blog. I don't know the validity of it, but I thought it was pretty interesting. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it. Someone posted this in 99. Several years ago, I had a guy tell me his wife was a full-blooded Navajo Indian. Her grandfather was a medicine man. The grandfather eventually said a story that was handed down to him over generations that there happens to be several caves in this area, and there was only one that had water running out of it, so it could have been this cave. The water tunnel was only about three to four feet high, that matches, with water about two feet of water in the center of it. There was kept Navajo treasure. So someone may have found that treasure in in the 60s or whatever, when they first explored this cave. Like, who knows? But apparently this Navajo gold was kept in a cave like this. It's kind of interesting. Because what the Navajo and the Aztecs would do is they would hide it in places you can't easily access. Like the Nav- the Aztecs would actually ha- put it in a dry cave and then divert water to flood that cave so no one could get into it. All right, let me talk about bad air right quick. Bad air is a specific diving term that is used in caving to refer to air that doesn't have the normal breathable oxygen levels. That's what's called bad air. So the composition of air is, as you guys may know, you only have 21% oxygen. Mostly it's nitrogen, 78%, and then other gases as well. That's the composition. So 20% oxygen in a cave that small goes really quickly because we breathe in oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. When you breathe out, obviously it's carbon dioxide, and that is poisonous to us to breathe back in, okay? So that is called bad air. They think this cave, before these... Divers even got to the the hidden room, the void, that that void already was filled with bad air. One of the reasons is because the cave is limestone and the grasses and bushes above on the surface of the mountain, they emit carbon dioxide and that actually seeps through the limestone and it fills up those voids. So we don't actually know how much oxygen was there to begin with. Got it. But it's not a lot if you're breathing it in, especially for four people. So most likely they got up there and they realized, you know, after their... Holy shit, there's nothing there. Exactly. Their adrenaline's pumping. They get up there and quickly realize, shit, there's not enough oxygen. We got to get out of here right now. So... This is terrifying. They probably didn't even breathe in long enough to last 45 seconds. The effects of bad air is not just losing your breath and drowning. You also get headaches, dizziness, weakness. This is your body struggling with the lack of oxygen. Shortness of breath, heartbeat is rapid. You start hallucinating. You start getting disorientated. You start losing your sense of direction. That's why that guy almost missed the exit. You get dizzy, you pass out, all this shit, your brain functions decline, you go unconscious. All this is when you don't have enough oxygen and they didn't have hardly any. So they get up in that room realizing there's no oxygen to stay there and they have to immediately go back while they're still kind of resting from swimming the freaking way there to begin with. You start to asphyxiate. In the case of the Gollum's cave, it seemed that the stagnant, confined space allowed carbon dioxide to accumulate. The bad air would have made it nearly impossible for the trapped cavers to hold their breath, find the exit, or rescue each other. The darkness and narrow passage likely amplified panic as they struggled to breathe and escape. But... We know one of them didn't make it. Let's see if the other ones make it. So the regular atmosphere is 21% oxygen. Let's say generously, the atmosphere in that void generously was 10% oxygen. Oh, geez. Yeah. So there's like nothing there. 
And not only that, they have to wait 30 seconds at least for the other diver after they've gone. Mm -hmm. So they're dying in this void. And they have to wait 30 seconds because they can't just all go in at the same time. They get freaking crammed up. Right. You got to wait. And each person that goes, there's four in there. The first person, Jennifer, has 60 seconds of oxygen. The next person, 45, you know, because the oxygen is depleted. So when you take that <gasps> breath to go in there, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Am I like really hitting this home for you? Oh, yeah, you're no, hitting I, this I, home. I, yeah, Let's see it to the end here. We, we understand. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> And we almost forgot about the fact that Jennifer is floating. All right, I'll skip the other struggles, like the cold water in the cave, Zap's body heat, causes impairment. We get it. Yeah, we, we get it. Disorientation, right, panic. Right, we get it. Right, let's go. Let's go back to Ariel. Can she do it? Back to Ariel. In order for her to get out, she has got to push Jennifer's body out of the way. Jennifer's body was a movie. But this is a, actually a lot to overcome. There's several... There's several laws of physics which she has to overcome. Number one is buoyancy. Jennifer's body is floating, lifeless at this point. And when your body is floating lifeless, it rises. So this cave is so narrow, only one person can traverse it at a time. Now she has to, Ariel has to push Jennifer's body out of the way, which is getting difficult because as the body, as Jennifer's body's rising, it's getting caught on the roof of the cave. So mm. pushing it snags rocks and stuff like this, that could be difficult, right? Right. And if she pulls it back farther and tries to push it up, that's not going to work either. Yeah. Also, how about increased volume and surface area? This means more fluid drag as she's trying to push causes a lot of that water to push back oh, even yeah. harder on her. Mm -hmm. The top of her body tips over, sort of, when you're floating like that, and uh -huh. it creates a seesaw where her legs are coming up. So now she's got to struggle with the legs, like getting under the legs, pushing the legs out the way. Her pushing base isn't stable at all. Mm -hmm. All right. And I, I did not know this, so don't think I'm too smart, but Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an opposite reaction. That means as this, as Ariel is pushing this lifeless body of, let's say, 160 pounds, pushing it, that 160 pounds is pushing back. It's a lot easier to push something when you have stable footing, when your feet are on the ground. However, when you're suspended in water, if something is pushing back on you, it's almost making you go backwards. Yeah. That actually almost doubles the amount of strength you need to overcome that friction of it pushing you backwards because you don't have a stable footing. Right. So she has to really exert herself at this point. If there was nothing against what she's pushing, it's almost like you're twice as strong because of the because of the water. Like you're when you're floating in water and you're you're buoyant. The mm -hmm. buoyancy would almost help you. But in this case, because they, she was pushing against something, it's almost like if you're it, it, like if you're at the end of the pool and you're pushing if you're against about to the wall. push off, it's like you're you're going twice as fast. Yeah, exactly. But but instead like you're You don't have anything to brace against. Right. Yeah. So it is hard. Let's just say that. Another Utah resident, Brian Lamprey, said he had previously traversed Gollum's cave himself, and when swimming through the tunnel, it was easy to kick up dirt, which clouds the water and prevents you from seeing. He actually swam past the entrance into a six-foot-long dead end of the water tunnel, but was able to back up and find the exit. But he was by himself. But he was by himself. At this point, Ariel is struggling to push Jennifer's body out of the way. And unfortunately, her oxygen supply just doesn't do it for her. She runs out of air. And now there's two bodies floating, covering oh, the path. no. Luckily, the next guy, strong guy, because really think about this. Hang on. Brandon has come up with, by the way, as you embark on your Masters of Physics Oh, course, yes. I forgot that you're doing that. Which starts in a month. That's so exciting. Talk physics to me. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Before, you should do it. Before you start, I, and I hate to, I really hate to divert. I'll make this quick, I promise. But before you start your Master 
master's degree, you should watch Oppenheimer. It's on Amazon Prime. Right <gasps> I want to watch it. I do. It's on. It's on Amazon Prime right now. I will say that I rented it. I rented it when I started uh, on my plane on on what day did I fly back? The twentieth. Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. Oh, on your way back. Like yep. two days ago, I started it. I watched the first ten minutes of it, and I was like, I need to be like in a specific state to watch this, and you only have forty eight hours to. We should watch Oppenheimer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, so you guys should watch Oppenheimer, but like I, it, it is so good. So I watched the, I watched the rest of it last night, minus the last half an hour because I fell asleep because it was late. And then this morning I went to finish it and it was like, you ran out of time. So you need to pay to rent it again. And I was so sad. So I missed the last half hour, but it was really good. I can tell you what happens. They dropped this bomb. They, they already dropped the bomb at the part that I'm at. <laughs> this is the next guy going through. His name is John Blake Donner. He's he's kind of like a the Donner party. He's kind of a well built dude. He is not really a football player, which isn't going to come in handy. He's more of a musician. In fact, his band is about to release. It's a metal band. His band's actually about to release their first album. They mm-hmm. actually just recorded it the day before this. So let's see if that album can come out. Let's see if he can do it. Now you got to keep something in mind. Ariel and Jennifer. They're now floating obstructions for this guy, right? Floating obstructions. He has to find a way to push because you can't go around them. It's only a four feet diameter. You cannot go around them. You got to find a way to push both of them. And physics tells us that if you double the mass and inertia to displace, it requires twice as much force input so everything basically doubles so the force it would take you to push 160 pounds with with no stable base would need to be at least 240 pounds 240 pounds times that by two 480 480 pounds so you got to be able to push 480 pounds with about a total of 20 seconds of oxygen because there was no oxygen because you're the third man in (sighs) You know, what's crazy is that when I was a a younger person and I was in physics class in high school or like in math in high school, like this stuff didn't make sense. But now being an adult with some life experience, now this stuff makes sense. Is that weird? Mm -mm. He's also got a wider profile to push. He's got two bodies at this point and these narrow obstacles and the bodies are now catching on the roof of the cave because of buoyancy. Both of the bodies are floating up and their legs are obstructing his way. And he's got to find a way not only to, it's not just pushing them straight. You got to actually kind of push them down to get them off the roof and then push them. It is very hard. It would be it would be a miracle if he makes it out of here. The poor Heidi. Wow, is her reaction. <laughs> she, this is Heidi's first she live. She will Welcome. never attend a live again after this. Yeah, she's like, shit, I thought this was my favorite murder. <laughs> ah. All right. So there's some there's some definite factors here. Dual mass inertia, all this stuff. I'm all just, right. I'm so just there's gonna, like bodies in the water. Yeah, I'm just gonna just, just let me just make this a little bit easier here. Give it to us straight here. What all right, happens? So, four hikers found dead inside cave. Oh, oh so, no. there, so, they all it, it's a traffic jam. They were found all stuck in a traffic jam in the water because you can't just push. So, one person loses consciousness, then all, all the rest of them are dead. If Jennifer didn't lose consciousness, and let's say. Ariel or Scott or whoever made it out, then possibly the second one and the third and fourth would make it out. But only one person, it only takes one person in a four foot water hole to lose consciousness. And then the laws of physics will not let you progress any further. Mm. And you can't go back. Or if you do go back, you're just going to suffocate. (laughs) So it's either at this point, you have to make the decision. Should I drown or suffocate? Oh God! Like they're, oh, man. they're that's both a terrible decision. Horrible. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I have a question though. Did Here's the first the guy? Yeah. The, don't go did the guy? Did, well, yeah, don't go spelunking. But did the guy that was that decided to wait it out and not go in the into the water? Did he report these deaths, or was he like shit? Like where are my friends and peace out? No, he reported them. So okay. he waited forty five minutes, and he kind of knew something was wrong. Waited another thirty minutes, then he called the police. 
because he know. I mean, he knew what was going on. Mm. They were dead in there, and they were all found crammed up in a chat in a traffic jam of human bodies. Oh my god, like human centipede, but drowning version in the water, floating. Like, oh, that's terrible. No, I don't even want to uh, picture that. That's so sad. Well, Jen, I, I'm going to need you to picture it. I, I, I did, and I don't want to, but I did. It's <sighs> sad. This is the water, because you have to swim going back, and that's how they knew that they all swam back. And you have Jennifer's body right here, and there's just no way to push it. There's, there's like, no way. You can't do it underwater with limited oxygen, limited strength, you know? Yeah. And then think about Scott when he's going. I mean, uh, Blake when he's going. You take that and you, you basically double it. You double everything, the amount of force it takes. And then the third guy, imagine the third guy going and seeing three, all three bodies dead. And what's he going to do? You can't push that. You're fucked. Yeah. He ain't making it out. If one person didn't make it out, no one made it out. That is that is a reality of it. They did try to pump water out to send divers in, but at the end of the day, damn. They uh they all died. Everyone that went in the cave. They're dead. That's really sad. They did seal the cave up. That usually happens. I see in these stories like John Jones and stuff. They seal it up. About a year or two, because it, it goes through red tape. Finally, they seal it up. They cement it, whatever. So but, nobody ha- dies again in there. Yeah, right. but there's uh, there's other caves popping up. And Did undiscovered. they extract the bodies? Yeah, they got them out. Yeah, because in the other one, they didn't. Yeah, well, they couldn't get them out then. Yeah. But they oh, got the them daddy, out. In the Daddy the, Putty Cave? They couldn't get them out. Yeah, his they got body, like his tomb is there, basically. Oh, yeah, I forgot you didn't hear that one. No. Yeah. Oh. I, so, I heard some of it because I was walking oh. down it was terrible, the man. street in Martha's Vineyard, but I didn't hear the whole it thing. It was terrible. Like, this guy got, yeah. John Jones went down face first into a... A hole barely big enough. I mean, uh-huh. if he would have ate Thanksgiving dinner, he wouldn't even be able to fit. He was that tight. And it's the same with this. Like, you can't even turn around <laughs> this. Yeah. Plus the bad. bad air you're sucking in. Because even stuff like the plants above that carbon dioxide is leaking into the cave and the, there were candles in there. There was no oxygen in there. I'm surprised that there was. They even made it. Yeah. Swam back. Totally. But the fact that you don't even know how much oxygen, and they're not thinking of that. They're just thinking, oh, it's a void, so it's got air. That's oxygen. Like, who thinks of that? You mm. said you didn't think of it. Like, that's the last no. thing you think about is how no. much oxygen's there. Nope. Yeah. Fucking crazy. But every one of them's dead. Mm. Every one of them, except the guy that stayed out of the cave. So that's it. Well, thanks for that depressing story. <laughs> yeah. You, you, did you think one of them was going to make it out? I thought at maybe. least one of them would. At first, I thought maybe like the, the first girl who like was the ringleader didn't make it out, which is kind of sad because it was her idea. And then they were going to maybe one person did get out. But well, it seemed and, like and she was the only one that was going to die, which was ironic, but also very sad. And then now it's just very sad times four. It's believed that the first girl, Jennifer, actually, since she didn't use the rope, it seemed she couldn't find the exit. I mean, the exit is literally like I'm doing my arms like this in a circle. That's the exit. So you're looking for that and, and you're looking for it by feeling all the rocks around you and seeing where there's an like opening. So I wonder if it, she felt because she had been there before she didn't need the rope. Well, also think about it. When they came into that little room, that void, they realized instantly that there's no oxygen in there at all. And they realized they had to go. Yeah. And and, and honestly, I don't know what that feels like, like, but I imagine it's not very good. And I don't mm. want to find out what that feels like. It's almost like you're you're under well, underwater. You take a deep breath and realize that you can't breathe, right? Yeah. But no one does this cave. I know that one diagram said it fits it fits six to eight people. That is just how wide it is. It, there's not six to eight people that have ever been in there at the same time. Like there's not six to eight people's worth of oxygen. It's just yeah. that's the size of people that's that the could size fit. of it. Yeah. I mean, the stories that uh, people have almost died, including Jennifer, the first time it was her that went in alone. Well, she did say that when she talked to her friends, she was like, I almost died. It was amazing. Sounds like a great time, like good idea. And I'm not trying to. But she didn't have any, you don't have any oxygen even the first time she went. Right. right. 
I'm not trying to dis- to besmirch the dead or anything like that. You no, know I'm saying so. He time times that by four. That's that is a re- and that's a recipe for disaster, man. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I think I will stay out of any type of cave diving situation. But I hope you guys like that. I um, I did. We're gonna get back into doing three episodes a week like usual. Just gotta. He's been uh, freaking sick and Christmas. S- s- yeah, been spelunking and stuff. You know. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, it's very sad. I mean, they are just thrill seekers, dude. I've done that shit too. Mm-hmm. Not that, but I've done shit that probably could have killed me. Right. You know, but I get it. But at the same time, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. You know, but you know. See y'all maybe tomorrow for some headlines. Yeah, we'll be on tomorrow. So thank you so much for being here. And till next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people. I kind of run this shit.